All right, so you may or may have not noticed, but I've started doing some fasted rides. So last week I did a three hour fasted ride, which was, you know, not too hard. It was the first fasted ride I've ever done, to be honest. Um, normally I don't do them because often I get headaches or other things um, due to doing fasted rides. But on this one, I made sure I drank loads before, had electrolyte tab in my water. So, but obviously no carbs in that. Um, and yeah, it was actually pretty chill. Uh, you can see here, here's my power data. So average 31 kilometers an hour, um, TSS seven less, intensity factor 0.63, I was supposed to do 0.65, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, 200 watts normalized, so that was basically the goal. Um, so three hours, 190 to 222 watts. How did I feel on the ride? Um, I felt okay, like it felt a little weird. Um, the first like hour and a half was like incredibly, like just felt normal. And then the last hour and a half, I could feel like, you know, it's not like you're hungry, but you just don't feel like if I went up to maybe 300 watts for like, 10 like maybe 30 seconds or something just to like you know get over a little hill you'd suddenly be like ah yeah i can't do this and that's just because you're using obviously a lot more glycogen at that point but i mean obviously i mean that's it's not you can do that but as in you just don't feel as good but just riding steady it was very chill so anyway i've got a couple studies that um i'll talk about um so my coach is he's like experimenting with it and he's he recommends it quite a lot. So I was just asking for some studies. So here we go. Training with limited carbohydrate availability can stimulate adaptions in muscle cells to facilitate energy production via fat oxidation. Um, so basically what they do is they have 20 uh, young male volunteers in a six week endurance program, one to one and a half si hours cycling at 70% of VO2 max. So I think that would probably be like 60% of FTP. Um, and then, and they all had, so they're basically all eating a high carb diet. And then some of them would basically fast, so well fast, and they, they just do it in the morning, not eating anything. Um, while the others would have 160 grams of carbs, more or less, so one gram per kilo of body weight per hour. Um, when, so, you know, it would keep going, keep going. Um, it increased the VO2 max and performance in both groups. Um, but yeah, so basically, obviously got faster, they did training, but this is the important bit here. Um, so. IMCL degradation during the exercise, and anyway, we keep going down, keep going down. In contrast with the mind degree, uh, where is it, where is it, where is it? That's for, oh, here we go, right. So basically it's just talking about how the degradation of uh, muscle fibers. So type 2A, I believe, is the slow twitch muscle fibers. So basically when you break them down, obviously you're causing training adaption. So thus for a given uh, absolute exercise intensity and duration, the fasted, so F, stimulated exercise-induced IMCL L degradation in type 2A fibers. Um, although the change in the net iron cell breakdown from the protest to the postest only tended to be increased. So basically what it's trying to say is that you get an increase in training adaptions due to being in a faster state. And that is the whole point of doing it. And that's why I would recommend it for the hill climb season. Because when you are doing hill climbs, you don't want to be doing a lot of intent, like a lot of duration, just because that will mean that your intensity will not be as high, but you still want to do some endurance rides. So in order to get the most from your endurance rides, it makes sense to do them in a faster state because you get more training adaptions. We also have this other study here as well. Um, in conclusion, the current study for the first time shows that adaptions to short-term endurance training in the faster state are largely similar to training in the carbohydrate-fed state. But basically the problem you have is that when you're, as soon as you have carbohydrates, your body uses that and does not burn the fat. So here we go. In still training induced upregulation of fat transporter protein content was completely inhibited when you have carbohydrates. Although training in the fast state did not result in an increased rate of fat oxidation during exercise with carbohydrate intake, um, glycogen breakdown was lower when compared with this, the carbohydrate group. So you basically break down less glycogen. Um, but however, it does say further studies must investigate whether this glycogen sparing action is beneficial for endurance performance. So it's basically saying, well, you don't use as much glycogen, but is that useful? Obviously it is because you then, in a race, let's say you would become you used to burning more fat as a fuel source and then you'd have more glycogen to use. So it's pretty useful. Um, but I also just say like, even just for hill climbs, it just makes you be able to get more adaptions for the same uh, training stimulus, which is pretty useful. So for instance, this ride, let's say I did three hours here, 120 TSS. Maybe like, I mean, okay, I'm not gonna use TSS, but let's say if I want to do an equivalent ride, I would have to do maybe do four and a half hours if I was carbohydrate fed, just something like that, or four hours maybe. So it means you don't, don't have to do as many hours and you still get the same benefits. So it's pretty beautiful to be honest. Um, what are the downsides? 
uh, I don't really know, to be honest. Maybe you might feel hungry or something, but it's not like you're gonna bonk because you're not using high intensity. Like obviously maybe if you first started riding, you might. Like if I tried to do six hour ride, probably couldn't do it. But if you build up slowly, like this is my first ride, three hours, and it was like chill, just chill. You get home, um, I wasn't really mega, mega hungry. Uh, I would say that, like, obviously you then have to eat more when you get back. There's also probably quite an effective way of losing weight as well because you're burning more fat, but also you just physically won't eat as much that day because if you're not gonna have breakfast and then afterwards, you're gonna obviously eat to like recover, but you're not, you can't eat like double the amount that you, well, you won't eat as much basically. So I think it's also a good way of losing weight to be honest. Um, by in these studies, it's not, it doesn't really concentrate on losing weight. It's more about just the training adaptions, which you can get. Um, so yeah, I do rate it. Um, I've got a four hour ride tomorrow. Um, so I'll probably do maybe the first three hours fasted and then eat in the last hour. That's the other way. If you, if you just want to build up slowly, maybe just do the first hour fasted and then next, next week do two hours fasted. Uh, and then you get used to it. Is it essential? No. If you had like 20 hours in the week, 25 hours in the week, probably wouldn't be mega, mega useful. Um, I mean, because if you're a professional rider, the way you can get your mitochondria to be so efficient is just to literally train 30 hours a week. And you wouldn't, you could do that in base season, let's say, um, and you could do that fully carbed and it'll be fine. But let's say you're only got 10 hours to train, you want the endurance benefits, then it's a very good way of doing it. Um, and obviously the hill climb season is one of those times when you don't want to, even if you have full time, which I'm pretty much full time at the moment, um, I mean, I could train like five hours every day if I wanted to, but like there'd be no point because I wouldn't, I'd be just too tired to go really hard on the, inten oh, and have that real high intensity, which is what you need. Um, so it's better to do shorter rides uh, and just do them in a faster state to try and get more training benefits. So I hope you did, this did help. If you have any more questions, um, leave them in the comments. Um, it's pretty new to me. I was not really for it, but after trying it a little bit, it's actually not that bad. Um, my main reservation was just because often I used to get headaches when I did like faster things, but I think I'm I'm past that these days, so it's all good. But I don't think I'd ever do a faster ride with intensity. Um, I'd only do it just like zone two, um, which is fine because then you, I mean you don't really need to eat on zone two rides anyway. Like when you do, I don't know when I do uh, let's say four hours, I don't eat that much. But if I do four hours intense, maybe like with some real hard efforts, then obviously you need to eat. Um, but anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy. And I'll see you in the next vid.